the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Father, send now your Spirit all over the earth. Let the Holy Ghost live in the hearts of all nations, that they may be preserved from the generation, disaster, and war. May the Lady of the all nations, the Blessed Virgin Mary, our co-redemptress and mediatrix of all races, be our advocate. Amen. Ave Maria, gracia plena, Dominus tecum, benedita tu mulieribus, e benedictu fructu ventri tu Iesus. Sancta Maria, Mata Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nocet in ora mortis nostra. Amen. Welcome to Co-Redemptrix TV. Today we'll be going into the second part of the video we did earlier on the miracles of the rosary. And we're going to be hearing a lot from the experiences and testimonies of no other than St. Dominic, that great saint who received the rosary for, um, for, from the Blessed Mother on behalf of the church. The rosary itself is composed uh, principally of the prayer that Christ taught the apostles, that's their father, and the angelic salutation, which is the Hail Mary, uh, the first part of which we easily see in Luke chapter 1. It was without doubt the first prayer, the first devotion of the faithful uh, for a very long period of time. It's been in use throughout the centuries uh, since uh, apostolic times, but it was in 1214 that Holy Mother Church received the rosary in its present form. And according to the form we use it today, it was given to the church by St. Dominic, who have received it from the Blessed Virgin Mary, as a powerful means of converting the Albigensian heretics as well as other sinners. The story of the Rosary, St. Dominic, in explaining it to us, referenced a book known as De Dignitate. Salteri by Blessed Alain de la Roche, St. Dominic, seeing the gravity of people's sins, um, hindering them from conversion, was moved to convert the Abergesian heretics. He withdrew to a forest near Toulouse where he prayed unceasingly for three days and three nights. During this time, he did nothing but weep and do harsh penances in order to appease the rot of the uh, Almighty God. He used his discipline so much that his body was lacerated and eventually fell into a coma. At this point, a lady appeared to him accompanied by three angels. Dear Dominic, she said, Do you know what weapon the Blessed Trinity wants to use to reform the world? Oh, my lady, answered Sir Dominic, you know better, far better than I do, because next to your son Jesus, uh, Christ, you have always been the chief instrument of our salvation. A lady replied, I want you to know that in this kind of warfare, the battering ram has always been the angelic psalter, which is the foundation, the foundation stone of the New Testament. Therefore, if you want to reach these hardened souls and win them over to God, preach my psalter. He rose, comforted and burning with zeal for the conversion of the people. In the district, he made straight for the cathedral. And once unseen angels, at once unseen angels rang the bells to gather the people together, and St. Dominic began to preach. At the very beginning of the sermon, an appalling storm broke out. The earth shook, the sun was darkened. And there was so much thunder and lightning that all we were very much afraid, even greater was their fear. When looking at a picture of a lady exposed in a prominent place, they saw her raise her arms to heaven three times to call down God's vengeance upon them if they failed to be converted, to amend their lives and seek the protection of the Holy Mother of God. God wish by means of this supernatural phenomena to spread the new devotion of the Holy Rosary and make it more widely known. At last, at the prayer of St. Dominic, the storm came to an end and he went on preaching so fervently and compellingly did he explain the importance and value of the Holy Rosary that 
Almost all the people of Toulouse embraced it and renounced their false beliefs. In a very short time, great improvement was seen in the town. People began leading Christian lives and gave up their former uh, bad habits. This miraculous way in which the devotion to the Holy Rosary was established, something of a parallel to the way in which the Almighty God gave His law to the world on Mount Sinai, obviously proves its value and importance. At Sinai there were storms, there was thunder, there were hail, and many people could not even look at Moses when he came down. Inspired by the Holy Ghost and instructed by the Blessed Virgin, as well as by his own experience and Dominic preached the rosary to the rest in, in the rest of his life. He preached it by example as well as by his sermons, by his sermons and he was able to convert many heretics. And therefore, uh, one day he had to preach in the Notre Dame in Paris and it happened to be the feast of St. John the Evangelist. He was in a little chapel behind the high altar prayerfully preparing his sermon by saying the rosary as he did always but then a lady appeared to him and said Dominic even though what you have planned to say is say may be very good I am bringing you a much better sermon so Dominic took in his hands the book a lady proffered read the sermon carefully and when he had understood it and meditated upon it he gave thanks to the blessed mother when the time came, he went up into the pulpit, in spite of the feast they made no mention of St. John, except to say that he had been found worthy to be the guardian of the Queen of Heaven. The congregation was made up of theologians and other eminent people who were used to hearing unusual and um, polished discourses, but St. Dominic told them that it was not his wish to give them a learned discourse. Wise in the eyes of the world, but that he would speak in the simplicity of the Holy Ghost and his forcefulness. So he began preaching the Holy Rosary, explained the Hail Mary, word by word, as he would uh, to a group of children, and used the very simple illustrations which were in the book a lady had given to him. Cartagena, the great scholar, quoting Blessed Alain de la Roche in Dignitatiri Salteri, described how this took place. Blessed Alain writes that one day Father Dominic said to him in the vision, My son, it is good to preach, but there is always a danger of looking for praise rather than the salvation of souls. Listen carefully to what happened to me in Paris so that you may be on guard against this kind of mistake. I was to preach in the great church dedicated to a blessed uh, lady and I was particularly anxious to give a brilliant sermon. But not, not out of pride, but because of the high intellectual stature of the congregation. An hour after the time I had to preach, I was recollecting, uh, saying my ro rosary, as I always did before giving a sermon, when I fell into ecstasy and I saw my beloved uh, friend, the mother of God, coming towards me with a book in her hand. Dominic, she said, your sermon for today may be very good indeed, but no matter how good it is, I have brought you one that is very much better. Of course, I was overjoyed to the book read every word of it. Uh, just as a lady had said, I found exactly the right things to say in my sermon, so I thanked her with all my heart. When it was time to begin, I saw the University of Paris had turned out in full force, as well as a large number of noble men. They had all seen and heard of the great things that the good Lord had been doing through me, so I went up uh, into the pulpit. It was the feast of St. John the Apostle, but all I said about him was that he had been found worthy to be the guardian of the Queen of Heaven. Then I addressed the congregation. And so it was that he was able to bring about uh, much conversion to people and that is why a lady brought that uh, rosary that book to enable him preach it uh, many times people uh, concentrate we concentrate so much on thundering against great sins without first watering uh, the hearts the dry earth 
Blanche of Castile, Queen of France, was deeply grieved because 12 years after her marriage, she was still childless. When Saint Dominic went to see her, he advised her to say her rosary every day to ask God for the grace of motherhood and she faithfully carried out his advice. In 1213, she gave birth to her eldest child, Philip, but the child died in infancy. The Queen's favor was no wise dulled by his, this disappointment. On the contrary, she sought a lady's help more than ever before. She had a large number of rosaries given out to all members of his court and also to people in several cities of the kingdom, asking them to join her in entreating God for a blessing that this time will be complete. Thus, in 1215, St. Louis was born, the prince who was to become the glory of France and the model of all Christian kings. Alphonsus VIII, king of Aragon and Castile, had been leading a disorderly life and therefore had been punished by God in several ways. One of these had been that he was worsted in battle and had to take refuge in a city belonging to one of his allies. So Dominic happened to be in this city on Christmas Day and preached on the Holy Rosary, as he always did, pointing out how great were the graces that we obtained through it. He mentioned, among other things, that those who said the rosary devoutly would overcome their enemies and would regain all that they had lost in warfare. The king listened attentively and sent for St. Dominic to ask him if what he had said about the rosary was really true. St. Dominic assured him that nothing was more true and that if only he would practice this devotion and join the confraternity, he would see for himself the king resolved, family resolved to say his rosary every day and persevered for a year in doing so. The next very Christmas, a lady appeared to him at the end of the rosary and said, Alphonsus, you have served me for a year by saying my rosary devoutly every day, so I have come to reward you. I have obtained the forgiveness of your sins from my son and I am going to give you this rosary. Wear it and I promise you that none of your enemies will ever be able to harm you again. Wear it. You hear that? Apart from praying it, wear it. Many times today, hear people criticize wearing of the rosary. Wear it, and I promise you that none of your enemies will ever be able to harm you again. And let it vanish, leaving the king overjoyed and greatly encouraged. He immediately went in search of the queen to tell her all about a lady's gift and the promise that went with it. He held the rosary to her eyes. Um, she had been blind for some time and her sight was instantly restored. Shortly afterwards, the king rallied some troops and the king and the help of his allies and boldly attacked his enemies. He forced them to give back the territory that they had taken from him and to make amends for their own other offenses against him and put them completely to rot. In fact, he became so lucky in war that soldiers shrugged from all sides to fight under his standard because it seemed that whenever he went to battle, the victory was sure to be his. This is not surprising because he never went to battle without first saying the rosary devoutly on his knees. He made certain that all the members of his court joined the confraternity of the Most Holy Rosary. And he saw also that his officers and servants were devoted to it. The queen joined the confraternity and started saying the rosary too. And she and her husband persevered in her living service and lived really holy lives. Uh, the next is that a miracle concerning uh, Don Perez. Saint Dominic had a cousin uh, named Don Perez or Pedro who was leading a highly immoral life. When he heard that his cousin was preaching on the wonders of the Holy Rosary and learned that several people had been converted and had amended their lives by means of it, he said, I have given up all hope of being saved, but now I am beginning to take out again. I really must hear the man of God. So one day he went to hear one of St. Dominic's uh, sermon. When the letter caught sight of him, he struck out 
against sin more zealously than ever before and from the depth of his heart he besought almighty god to enlighten his cousin and to let him see what a deplorable state his soul was in at first don perez was somewhat alarmed but he still did not he still did not resolve to change his ways he came once more to hear some dominic preach and his cousin realizing that a heart was that a heart as hard as his could only be moved by something quite out of the ordinary cried out in a loud voice oh lord jesus grant that the whole congregation may actually see the state of the man who has just come into your house then everybody suddenly saw that don perez was completely surrounded by a band of devils in the form of hideout beasts who were holding him in great iron chains people fled hither vita in abject terror and don perez himself was even more appalled when uh, the, you know than when that day when he saw how everyone shunned him so Domi told him all told them all to stand still and said to his cousin unhappy man that you are acknowledge the deplorable state you are in and throw yourself at a lady's feet take this rosary saying with devotion and with true sorrow for all your sins and make a firm resolution to amend your life so Don perez knelt down and said the whole rosary he then felt the need of making his confession and did so without felt contrition Saint Dominic ordered him to say the rosary every day. He promised to do so, and he entered his name on the rosary confraternity list with his own hand. When he left the church, his face was so was no longer horrible uh, to behold, but a glow like that of an angel's. Uh, therefore, he persevered in devotion to the Holy Rosary, led a well-ordered Christian life, and died a happy death. The next miracle involved, we call it miracle, Jesus told the pressure of love visionary uh, that the highest miracle is to convert a sinner and lead him back home to heaven along the way of the cross. Conversion of a sinner. Every other miracle is temporal, but the conversion of sinners saved their souls. And that is why Jesus said the conversion of a sinner is the highest miracle in the world. St. Domi was preaching the rosary near uh, Cassione, and Abigesian was brought to him, who was possessed by the devil. St. Domi exorcised him in the presence of a great crowd of people. It appears that over 12,000 had come to hear him preach. The devils who were in possession of this wretched man were forced to answer St. Domi's question. In spite of themselves, they said that one, there were 15,000 of them in the body of this poor man because he had attacked the 15 mysteries of the rosary. The man attacked the rosary uh, and got possessed by 15,000 demons. Two, they went on to testify that by preaching the rosary, he put fear and horror into the very depths of hell and that he was the, he was the man they hated most throughout the whole world because of the souls which he has snatched from them through devotion to the Holy Rosary. Three, they then revealed several other things. And then they put his rosary about uh, the Abedjessian's neck and asked the devils to tell him who of all the saints in heaven was the one they feared the most and who should therefore be the most loved and revered by men. At this, they let out such unearthly screams that most of the people fell into the ground, uh, faint from fear. Then, using all their cunning so as not to answer, the devils wept and wailed in such a pitiful way that many of the people wept too, out of purely natural pity. The devil spoke through the mouth of the Abijasian, pleading in a heart a, a voice, Dominic, Dominic, have mercy on us, we promise you that we will never hurt you. You have always had compassion for sinners and those in distress have pity on us for we are in grievous straits. We are suffering so very much already. So why do you delight in heightening our pains? Can't you be satisfied with our suffering without adding to it? Have pity on us, have pity on us. St. Dominic was not uh, one which moved by the pathos of these wretched spirits and told them that he would not let them alone until they have answered his questions. 
Then they said they would whisper the answer in such a way that only St. Dominic could be able to hear. The letter family insisted upon their answering clearly and loudly. Then the devils kept quiet and refused to say another word, completely disregarding St. Dominic's orders. So he knelt down and prayed to a lady, Oh, all, all powerful and wonderful Virgin Mary, I implore you by the power of the Most Holy Rosary, order these enemies of the human race to answer me. No sooner had he made this prayer than a glowing flame left out of the ears, nostrils, and mouths of the Abijasan. Everyone shook with fear, but the fire did not hurt anyone. Then the devils cried, Dominic, we beseech you by the passion of Jesus Christ, by the merits of his most holy mother, and of all the sins. Let us leave the body of this man without speaking further. And for the angels, we answer your question whenever you wish. After all, uh, are we not liars? Why? So why should we? Why should you want to believe us? Please don't touch us anymore. Have pity on us. Woe unto you, wretched spirits, who do not deserve to be hurt. Saint Dominic said, and kneeling down, he prayed to a lady again. O oh, most worthy mother of wisdom, I'm praying for the people assembled here who have already learned how to say the angelic salutation properly. Please, I beg of you, force your enemies to proclaim the whole truth and nothing but the truth about this here and now before the multitudes. And Dominic had hardly finished his prayer when he saw a blessed lady near at hand surrounded by a multitude of angels. She struck the possessed man with a golden rod that she had said. Uh, Answer my servant Dominic at once. I remember the people neither saw a uh, or nor heard a lady, but only St. Dominic saw and heard her. Then the devil started screaming, Oh, you who are an enemy, our downfall and our destruction, why have you come from heaven just to torture us so grievously? Oh, advocate of sinners, you who snatch them from the very jaws of hell, you who are the very sure path to heaven, must we, in spite of ourselves, tell the whole truth and confess before everyone who it is who is the cause of our shame and our ruin or want to us, princes of darkness. Then listen well. You Christians, the mother of Jesus Christ is all powerful and she can save her servants from falling into hell. She is the sun which destroys the darkness of our wells and supplety. It is she who uncovers our hidden plots, breaking our snares, and makes our temptations useless and ineffectual. We have to say, however, reluctantly, that not a single soul who have always persevered in her service has ever been damned with us. One single sigh that she offers to the most, to the whole blessed Trinity, is worth more than all the prayers desires and aspirations of all the saints who fear her more than all the other saints in heaven together and we have no success with our faithful servants many christians who call upon her when they are at the hour of death and who really ought to be damned according to our ordinary standard are saved by her intercession or if only that mary uh, had not pitted her strength against us and had not upset our plans, we should have conquered the church and should have destroyed it long before this. And we should have, we would have seen to it that the others of the church fell into error and disorder. Now that we are forced to speak, we must also tell you this, nobody who perseveres in saying the rosary will be damned uh, because she obtains for his, her servants the grace of true contrition for their sins and by means of this, they obtain God's forgiveness and mercy. Then St. Dominic had them all say the rosary very slowly and with great devotion. And a wonderful thing happened at each Hail Mary, that he and the people said together, a large group of devils issued forth from the wretched man's body under the guise of red hot coals. When the devils had all been expelled, and the heretic was at last entirely free of them, a lady who was still invisible gave her blessings to the assembled company and they were filled with joy because of this. A large number of heretics were converted and because of this miracle and joined the confraternity of the most holy uh, rosary. And that's a wonderful miracle of deliverance uh, which the Blessed Mother uh, brought uh, to 
that person who was uh, fortunate to have been possessed on account of speaking against a lady rosary. Something we see also in warning from beyond. When people speak and attack against attack a lady, they instantly uh, get possessed. It is almost impossible to do credit to the victories that come that count. As Count Simon, Simon de Montfort won against the Albigensas under the patronage of Our Lady of the Rosary. These victories are so famous that the world has never seen anything to match them. One day, he defeated 10,000 heretics with a force of 500 men, and on another occasion, he overcame 3,000 with only 30 men. Finally, with 800 horsemen and 1,000 infantrymen, he completely put to rout the army of the King of Aragon which was a hundred thousand strong and this with the loss on his side of only one horseman and eight soldiers a lady also protected Alain de la Vallée, a breton knight from great peril he too was fighting uh, for the faith against the abigensans one day when he found himself surrounded by enemies on all sides a lady led for 150 rocks upon his enemies and he was delivered from their hands another day when this his ship founded, uh, founded and was about to sink, the Blessed Mother caused 150 small hills to appear miraculously above the water by means of them reached Brittany in safety. So he built a monastery in the land for the religious of Saint Dominic in thanksgiving to a lady. Uh, for all the miracles she had worked on the on his behalf and an answer to his daily rosary having become a religious himself he died a holy death at Lyons. so we see we can see how much the rosary have done there is still a lot more but we will not be able to take all of them today we will be looking at them uh, much later uh, however, let us hear from a lady in a message of 8 December 1999 and the pressure of Lord devotion. The title is, My children, be careful. Don't know when the evil one comes. As I was praying during this hour, uh, heaven opened. I saw in a vision what looked like the sun. He gave out dazzling rays that I could not steady look at. As the rays approached me, cloud came down and covered the whole place. Then I could see that the rays were coming from the immaculate heart of a lady. She came nearer to me, touched me and said, Rise up, my son. I am the immaculate conception. I come to share my little joy with you. I come to share my little joy with you and beg you to be a consoler of my son, Jesus Christ, who is in a great agony because of you. My son, the Marana Awareness Lagos makes me happy. Their work pleases me much. Patrick, you will soon lose your courage and zeal because of disappointment. But I have interceded for you that your faith will not fail. When you stand firm again in truth, you take your people and fight against the evil man and his fruits. My son, the order of the holy wounds of Jesus Christ, my son at Impor, consoles me much. They wipe the agonizing face of my son covered with blood. Their work pleases me much. Hence, my heart is troubled uh, for seeing how some of them will abandon their vows. This will be caused uh, by the one who lives like Judas among them. This will be marked with the growing of hatred. But rejoice, for I am interceding for you. No one will be lost, even the one who lives like Judas. My children, be careful to know when the evil one comes. My children, be careful to know when the evil one comes. Be careful to know when he comes. My son, the Opus Rosa Mystica uh, gives me more joy. They heal many wounds in the mystical hearts of love. Then I asked mother, who are the Opus Rosa Mystica? Where will I get them? A lady answered, they are my apostles who are making my son and I happy. They are those whom I dictated the consecration prayer to the pressure blood of my son too. They are working hard for me. I am greatly pleased with them. The address is Opus Rosa Mystica, Horse Mary, Wittenberg, 54, D45277-420, Germany. I am interceding for them. I am near to help them. I am happy, my son, 
with all the efforts you and my apostles are the most precious blood and all the lovers of the precious blood of my son here in this nation and all the world are making I praise the bearer of my agony your offers please me much I bless you I'm the mother of the agonizing Jesus Christ I'm the Immaculate Conception rejoice and since January 2000 keep your body uh, natural and holy in our reparation prayer I saw the vision of the agonizing Jesus Christ hanging on the cross at the foot of the cross was our lady queen of the pressure blood weeping and at the same time praying in reparation for the sins of the world as I was watching cloud came down and covered the whole place the cloud appeared the agonizing uh, the cloud above the cross where the saints and angels of heaven were consuming the agonizing Jesus Christ. After a while, a lady rose up from the foot of the cross and came forward to us and said, My children, I come to share with you my little children the love I have for my agonizing son and the one I have for you, my children. Many did not understand. The great favor given to you last night by Sir Michael the Archangel. Sir Michael actually brought a chalice of the pressure blood that was put in the heart of those who were sealed uh, by the, the pressure blood of Jesus Christ. It is indeed a great favor. Children, your hearts were locked not to understand this great call of love. You opened your eyes but could not see, but you who will understand now will be filled with joy. And the mother of the agonizing Jesus Christ who obtained these favors for you through my bloody tears. Children, immediately you leave this gathering, you will understand in full why you were called. Some will be willing to see these days again, but it will be too late. I plead with you to follow well. Let not any of the heavenly blessings pass you. Pass you. Open your hearts for Jesus Christ who loves you much. My children, I'm begging you with tears. My children, to keep away from your body, the temple of the Holy Ghost, any properties of the evil one. Keep your body natural and holy. Remember, my children, that you are not the owner of this body. It belongs to my loving husband. He wants your body to be mortified and purified. Look at the body of my agonizing Jesus Christ, disfigured with wounds and blood. What effort are you making to console him? Keep your body holy. Run away from all these makeups, collagen, and its products. They are among the chains that bind you captives in the world. Children, what can you not give up to possess eternity? Is it uh, these evil products? Hey, your mother, keep yourself holy so that your body will be raised on the last day. I will offer you a white rose by 1.50 p.m. Tomorrow it is for your sanctity and holiness. At the same hour, my son will crown some heads among you with thorns, those who are willing to offer him a special love. At the same time, you will maintain absolute silence and meet him uh, with your spirit till 2 p.m. If you will, you will receive the crown of thorns from him. Remember, my son, that carnal mind cannot understand these things. I'm telling you, for they are spiritual matters. Remember to do your consecration to the pressure of blood. At that time, heaven will fill you all with the necessary gift to carry out the divine plan. That is, those who are consecrated to my son. Children, your understanding about the seal is very little. I'm the one who obtained it for you through my bloody tears. I want you all to think about the seal again. It is for you, it is for you, it is for the whole world. But Abbas, I will obtain for you and for all who want to know more about the seal, the Holy Spirit of truth. Fear not when you are preaching it, it is the last mercy from heaven. All who lose their seal will not enter the era of peace that is coming. They must have the mark of the beast. I am happy with you. They must have the mark of the beast, the 666. I am happy with your little effort because you did not come. As the Israelites of old to Mount Sinai, when they heard the voice, voice of God, and begged not to hear it anymore, so receive my blessings. Let the grace who pours out from the wounds of my pierced immaculate heart descend on you. May it increase your love for the agonizing Jesus Christ who loves you all. May my bloody tears obtain for you the peace of sanctity and faith. I will hide you all in my immaculate heart. Have mercy on Jesus. I bless you all. Immediately the vision passed. Pressure blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.